This is the Wonderfully Made Podcast, and I'm your host, Fifi Buchanan. On this show, I share personal experiences, narrate stories I've written to reveal truths about life and the human experience. I also share lifestyle improvement tips in bite-sized episodes, so you can listen during your commute, in the office, or in the comfort of your own home. My desire is that every time you listen, you are reminded that you are wonderfully made. Hello, Wonderfully Made community. I want to say thank you so much for being here, whether it's been one month, one year, two years or more, you're very welcome. And I want to remind you to take advantage of everything that's part of the community, whether it is participating in the book club, if you're on that level, listening to all the old episodes, watching all the old videos, messaging me and requesting topics to be covered and interacting with others that are in the community and commenting. Today, I'd like to talk about self-care isn't a cure-all. And I'm just really looking forward to pouring into you with this subject because I talk a lot about self-care, but I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the fact that self-care doesn't cover everything. The first thing I want to acknowledge is that self-care is about maintenance to prevent burnout. And I think sometimes it's hard to justify some of the things we do But if you keep in mind that this is because the self-care is cumulative and the effect of it is cumulative, then the same can be said about stress. And so the more I do for myself, the more I set boundaries, the more that I proactively do things that help my health and help my wellness overall, the less likely I am to burn out or the longer it may take to arrive at burnout. And that brings me to my next point, which is that Sometimes burnout happens anyway, and it's not from a lack of self-care. I think what's missing from the equation is we forget that everybody is not the same. We don't all have the same 24 hours. I have discussed that before. And with us not having the same 24 hours, some of us have a lot of commitments. Like I am quick to say, if you're overwhelmed, then you need to say no to some things or let go of your commitments. But there are some commitments that are not really negotiable, especially with different family dynamics and living situations. There are some things that we cannot negotiate out of, at least not in the the present moment that we may be feeling burned out. But what adds insult to injury, I think, is when a person is already struggling to stay afloat or even feels less than afloat, to then hear that this happened because you didn't take very good care of yourself. It disregards the lifestyles and responsibilities that many of us have. It disregards capitalism. It disregards living through a pandemic. It disregards the inequality that happens in the workplace, depending on which marginalized group or groups that you are from. It needs to be said that sometimes burnout happens anyway. And through no fault of your own, you arrive there. And yes, self-care will help you get out of that hole, but Lack of self-care is sometimes not up to you. The next one is also really important to me, and that is that self-care cannot replace community and a need for connection. I more than ever have realized that loneliness can cause so many of us to be physically and mentally and emotionally unwell. So many of us are starving for normal everyday interactions that are not over Zoom, that are not digital in some way, just regular old interactions, and they're lacking. And for you to crave connection, it does not show any inefficiency in you. It does not show that you're seeking validation outside of yourself. It is you operating in your normal human function. We are naturally made for relationships and connection and wanting to have support around us. Even when we're not going through something, sometimes the most beautiful scenery or delicious food is so much better when you have someone to look at and say, isn't this awesome? Isn't this great? And kind of connected to that, I would also say that self-care cannot replace intimacy. We each have a responsibility to ourselves to connect with ourselves, know ourselves, treat ourselves well, but desiring intimacy and connection does not speak to a lack of self-care or even a lack of self-love or needing to validate yourself outside of yourself by some other person. 
it is because it is a natural human longing and craving and actually a need to have those things. Proof is in all of the articles that exist where studies were done, where babies were cared for, and some were given human touch and some were not. And I believe in one of the studies that I read, some babies even passed away. And I believe they were, they were sick. And so the ones who received human touch and connection recovered much better. And I think we're seeing in these times where we have to be so careful in the pandemic of keeping ourselves safe and keeping the ones we love safe and our whole community some of us have had to limit our interaction severely and it is having an effect. And so to be feeling that way and on top of all of that, to be hearing, well, you just need self-care. Well, I ask this question gently, of course, but rather matter-of-factly, how will me taking a lavender bubble bath make up for wanting to share laughter with friends and talk about my day? There are some things that cannot be replaced by journaling or getting a massage or doing yoga or cleaning your house. There are some parts of life that you just want to share with others. And I would encourage you to be creative and inventive about how you navigate this because it is very crucial to you moving from a place of survival to a place of thriving. It's important for me to talk about this, though, because there's a narrative, which usually goes along with self-reliance, that any problem that you have, it's your responsibility to fix it, even if it wasn't something that you created. But when it comes to desiring intimacy and connection, the only fix is to figure out who you can connect with. But it's not your fault if you feel lonely or isolated or disconnected or not like you belong. Those are not good feelings and they can be the start of something far worse. But I hope that the start of understanding that self-care doesn't cure every problem would make you inventive enough to think about the way you need to behave and how you should move forward to get everything you need this year. And start small. Start with just tomorrow or the next hour or next week. And say, what do I need? What do I need outside of myself? What help could I use? What advice do I need? What coaching do I need? What encouragement do I need? Think about that because whatever your community looks like, if they are people who love and support you, they're going to try to help you get what it is you need to feel well. But self-care is not a cure-all. And last, I've said this before, but... Self-care will look different as you evolve. So if in the past certain things worked for you, whether it was prepping all of your meals because you didn't feel up to it or going to sleep an hour earlier or taking a long bath or going out for a hike, if those just keep you feeling this feeling of, of sadness or even numbness and it's not quite working, then you may consider that as you evolve, your needs have changed and what may have worked a week or two ago or a month ago isn't what you need presently. And this actually connects to why I think community is important because if you have people around you, they can also share best practices of their own and say, wow, well, so you weren't able to sleep last night? Well, what about this herb or supplement? Or have you tried a weighted blanket? Or how hydrated were you? Or what were you listening to before you went to sleep? Sometimes your community and the people who support and love you can really be instrumental in helping you to take care of yourself. And as you begin to take care of yourself, that alone is contributing to your community. Because if you're better, then there are people who will be inspired by it And you're also in a position to help others because you've gotten to a position of safety and wellness. I really want you to take this into your mind and into your heart that self-care is not a cure-all. You still need to do the things that you know to do and are able to do for self-care. But if you've done all of those things and you still don't feel great, the last thing you need is to beat yourself up about it and think that you've arrived here because of some fault of your own. Sometimes we just don't feel great and we don't have a good day or a a good week even. But keep doing what you know to do and keep testing 
to see if new things work to make you feel better or get you into a better headspace and learn to embrace and enjoy rest because feeling guilty about it is going to cancel out any sort of restoration you may have received. You are worthy and deserving of all the rest, all the self-care, but you're also worthy and deserving of connection and community and intimacy. It's a very vital part of the human experience. And we all experience difficult things and the connection and intimacy is what makes it bearable. So I wish for you that you would boldly step out and ask for what you need and look for what you need and embrace it because you're so much better when you have all of the love and support telling you to keep going. Thank you so much for listening and I will see you in the next episode.